Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the 2.4 liter boxer engine that's going to be used in the 2022 Subaru BRZ. Now a common complaint of the previous generation BRZ was that it didn't have enough power and it is going to gain some power now. A lot of people I think are disappointed though that it is not getting a turbocharger uh, and thus the you know increase in power that a turbocharger could provide. But in this video we're going to be talking about why I'm actually happy with the decision and the route that Subaru we went with this engine. I think it's a very cool engine. And so we're going to look into some of the details of this engine and why it's a great pairing with this 2022 BRZ. Now you can think of the new BRZ engine as a bit of a combination between the old BRZ engine and Subaru's latest turbocharged engine which came out in the Ascent, a 2.4 liter turbo. And so this is a 2.4 liter uh, naturally aspirated engine so it has the same bore and stroke 94 by 86 as the Subaru Ascent. Uh, though it is naturally aspirated like the previous BRZ, uses a high compression ratio 13.5 to 1. Previously on the BRZ it was 12.5 to 1. Uh, uh, this requiring premium fuel. However, on the Subaru Ascent, a lower compression ratio because it's turbocharged, but it's able to get away with 87 octane gas. So regular gas used on the Ascent, uh, and it is using a turbo with 14.3 PSI. So, you know, nearly double the amount of air going into this engine uh, versus this one from a pressure standpoint. Uh, however, this is able to take advantage of a few things uh, like that premium gas and a higher compression ratio. One of the things I'm excited to see carry over from the previous engine is the fact that it's using direct and port injection. So when Subaru went to the 2.4 liter turbo on the Ascent, uh, it is just direct injection. And this is using a similar block, however it has uh, direct and port injection as well. And so we'll talk later on about why that's important. Uh, our engine getting a bit of an RPM increase, so redline is 7500 versus 7400 for the previous engine, significantly greater than the Ascent engine's 6 thousand rpm 205 horsepower previously now we're up to 228 horsepower uh, the ascent engine does have more 260 but the brz is getting a nice torque bump as well so 184 pound feet versus 156 previously and the really good news is that torque comes on a lot earlier at 3700 rpm versus peak torque in the previous engine was at 6400 rpm so quite a bit earlier now compared to the ascent engine uh, yes this does have quite a bit more torque 277 pound feet uh, starting at 2000 rpm 50% more than the BRZ. However, one of the very beautiful things I find about this new BRZ, if you look at the lightest weight model, so you know the entry level uh, manual transmission versus the previous lightest model of the BRZ, we have just 17 pounds of difference here, about 2,800 pounds regardless, not a noticeable weight increase, even though it does have you know a larger engine with significantly more power and torque. So that is exciting to see that it's gonna keep its handling characteristics, I believe, and yet still have that nice little bump in power. Well, very easily you might say, well, Jason, I want more torque. I want 50% more torque. I want this engine in the BRZ, not this engine. Uh, and so I wanna do this little thought experiment where we toy around with putting each of these engines in the BRZ and then seeing what the force pressing us against the seat actually is, because that's ultimately what matters. We get excited about uh, acceleration and the more power you have, the more acceleration you can have, which is gonna plant you further back into your seat and you know it's gonna feel exciting. So. Let's put the two engines in and see how they kind of compare because I think this engine can really hold its own. So here we have our little model BRZ and we've got our engine which goes to the transmission, which goes to the final drive ratio, uh, which goes to our wheels. And so what we're looking at here is we're gonna have a vehicle that in second gear hits 60 miles per hour. That's our goal, hit 60 miles per hour in second gear. That'll give us a good uh, zero to 60 time. We can put that in the magazines and everyone's gonna wanna buy our car, right? And so that's what our goal is. Now what we need to figure out is what is our gear ratio in order for that zero to, that 60 mile per hour top speed in second gear. So what is our second gear gear ratio Here's our two engines. One of them has a 6,000 RPM red line. One of them has a 7,500 RPM red line. Trying to figure out second gear. We know our final drive ratio is 4.3. Uh, and we know our wheels uh, are sized, our tire size is 215 over 40 R18. So we can calculate the diameter from that. Gives us 24.8 inches or about 630 
millimeters. And so now we're trying to figure out if we're traveling 60 miles per hour, what is our wheel RPM? So 60 miles per hour, one mile per minute, we can figure out our RPM by multiplying the circumference of the tire, pi times its diameter, multiplying that by RPM, and that will give us our velocity. So we can do the math and our RPM turns out to be 813.2 RPM. That's our wheel RPM. Okay, so if we know our wheel RPM, we can multiply that by our gear ratios and that will give us our engine RPM. So we know what our engine RPM is, we know what our wheel RPM is, we know what our final drive ratio is. The only ratio we don't know is our second gear, which we're hoping for 60 miles per hour. So we solve this equation, we get 813.2, we multiply that by 4.3, we multiply that by X, our second gear ratio, and we set that equal to our engine RPM, 6,000 RPM, and that gives us a gear ratio of 1.716 if we are using the ascent engine. And then we can do the same math using the BRZ engine, uh, same numbers except the only thing that changes is our RPM, our red line is 7500, so that gives us a gear ratio, X is equal to 2.145. Now we wanna figure out what is our wheel torque, and so to figure out wheel torque, we take our engine torque and we multiply it by the transmission gear ratio and the final drive gear ratio. So. For the ascent engine, what we have is 277 pound-feet multiplied by our gear ratio, which we calculated at 1.716, multiplying that by our final drive, and we get a wheel torque of 2,044 pound-feet. Now, if we do the same math for the BRZ, we take our 184 pound-feet, multiply that by our gear ratio, 2.145, multiply by 4.3, we get 1,697. So although our engine had an improvement of 50% uh, in torque, our wheel torque, the feeling we'll actually feel pressing against us, is only improved by 20%. And the reason for that is because if you have a higher red line, you can use more aggressive gearing to reach the same vehicle speed. So it does turn into an advantage having this high red line, meaning you can get higher wheel torque. And so yes, what I could have just done instead of all this math is just taken 7,500, divided that by 6,000, 1.25, and multiplied that by this wheel torque right here, and then compared those two numbers. Uh, but you might have asked, well, why does that work? And here's the math explaining why why that works. Now the other thing to keep in mind, okay, so if we were to put this in this 2.4 liter turbo engine in the BRZ, it would have an advantage, you know, 20% more wheel torque. Great, that sounds good. But also we're going to add weight, so it's not even 20%. It's probably gonna be less than 20% because we have to add in weight in order to have this heavier turbocharged engine with the intercoolers and the turbo, that kind of stuff. You know, the added, uh, you know, if you have to compensate for that added torque uh, with bigger brakes, with, you know, bigger driveline components, that sort of thing. So it adds up and that means, you know, the real torque advantage, the feeling pressing you into your seat uh, isn't all that much greater if you were to go with the turbo engine. Now, another exciting thing about this engine is the torque curve. So the previous generation BRZ engine uh, had a very well-known uh, flaw in that torque curve in that from about, you know, a little over 3,000 RPM to a little below 5,000 RPM, it had a decent little dip in that torque curve. Uh, and so that's disappointing. And so, you know, I asked uh, Subaru why it has this. They didn't give me a definitive answer, uh, but it does have that torque curve. I've, I've heard, you know, some things saying it's emissions related. Ultimately, it's probably something about, you know, airflow uh, just at those RPM that it just doesn't work out whether it's the exhaust or the intake, um, likely airflow impacting that torque curve there. Uh, but ultimately, it has a very high peak torque, uh, meaning you gotta get those revs all the way up if you want that useful power. And uh, you know that mid-range has a dip in it, which is just disappointing to have. Um, and so for the 2022, they have not released a torque curve. However, I did see a image of the uh, you know the dash of the new BRZ, and on that dash you can see the torque curve and it shows a significantly smaller dip, I believe, than the previous generation. And on the, the previous generation BRZ, the dip is shown uh, quite well uh, on the dash, just like it is with the 2022 BRZ. So exciting to see that there's not much of a torque dip there. It looks like a small one, but not like what it was and you're hitting that peak torque so much earlier on, so you're able to carry that torque uh, throughout a very large range of the engine RPM, so it should be quite fun uh, to have that even torque throughout the RPM.
So why no turbo? Well, you know, right off the bat, easy answer, cost and complexity. If, if you wanted a turbocharged BRZ, it's going to cost significantly more. So cost and complexity. Um, also, another thing that was interesting is the Subaru Ascent engine has a bottom mounted turbocharger. And so that would raise this engine up, giving you a higher center of gravity. Uh, and you know, that's one of the key attributes of this BRZ is having such a low center of gravity, very nimble. And also you're going to add weight. You know, it could be about a hundred pounds of added weight putting in all of the turbocharger equipment. Um, so, you know, having that weight versus keeping the weight nearly identical and yet giving you a decent little bump in power and torque, uh, I think that's going to be really fun. And then finally, we get to throttle response. And I think this is kind of user dependent. You know, some people probably don't care as much about it as I do. I, I think throttle response is a critically important attribute for how fun a vehicle is. And you can't really be naturally aspirated in the world of combustion engines. So super responsive pedal feel. You don't have turbo lag. You don't have to wait for a certain RPM for that turbo to actually be effective. Uh, though that's less of an issue these days with our turbos that are spooling up, you know, at pretty low RPM. And then precise throttle control. And a good example within Subaru's lineup is the Subaru WRX. You know, you get in that car, you give it 50% throttle, you get 100% of the acceleration, you get full boost. And it's like, that's not what I asked for. And so with naturally aspirated engines, you have much more precise control. Uh, you get exactly what you asked for with that throttle pedal. So that to me is very important. And if you wanted a turbocharged BRZ, you know, the Supra exists. Unfortunately, not with a manual transmission. I wish they'd throw a manual in it, uh, but the Supra exists. I will say, you know, for the turbo people out there, if it did come with a turbo from the factory, one of the nice things about that is it, it makes it generally quite a bit easier to add a significant amount of power. It's simply a flash tune and you've got quite a bit more torque uh, than even what it's coming from the factory with. So with naturally aspirated engines, it's a bit more difficult to extract more power out of them. And finally, I want to talk about D4S. So this is Toyota's technology that they used in the first gen BRZ. So using both port and direct fuel injection, uh, and they're carrying that over for this 2.4 liter. So I'm excited to see the port injection. Uh, one big benefit of that port injection, helping to keep those intake valves clean, not have deposits build up on them uh, because those direct injectors cannot spray and clean off the intake valves. So the overall schematic of how this looks, you've got your fuel tank with a fuel pump that's sending low pressure through lines to your port injectors. Then you have a high pressure fuel pump that is pulling from those low pressure lines, uh, turning that into high pressure. And then that is used, that high pressure is used for the direct injectors. So what this looks like in the engine, of course, you've got your cylinders laying flat as this is a boxer engine. So you've got your intake manifold up top. You've got the port injector spraying into that manifold, uh, into those runners leading to the piston and then directly firing into the cylinder you have the direct injector. Now what's the purpose? So there's three different ways that you can now spray fuel into the engine. You can just use port, you can just use direct, or you can use a combination of both. So using port, that's important for startup. Port is used exclusively for when you are just cranking and starting up the engine. Uh, this helps give you a good air and fuel mixture. It gives it more time for that air and fuel to mix. Of course, if the engine's cold, uh, you're not going to have that fuel vaporize quite as easily. So you want to use that port and give it as much time as possible port and direct. Um, this is used at kind of low RPM, low load, uh, well mixed air fuel ratio, and you're going to have stable and efficient combustion. You can also choose to use a stratified charge where you have a really lean mixture from this port injector uh, for most of the air fuel mixture. And then you have a little rich pocket by that spark plug in the center and then you're able to combust that lean mixture and get efficient combustion. And then finally, if power is the desire uh, at high RPM, high load, just using the direct injector uh, for maximum power. And this is because it has a cooling effect within the cylinder, brings those temperatures down, reduces the likelihood for knock and allows you to make the most power possible by advancing your ignition timing. Now, one other thing I found interesting about this system is how they have their startup programmed. And so it's kind of interesting the way they switch between these different modes uh, for starting up the car. So 
for when you're strictly just starting the engine, pushing that push start button, uh, you're just using port injection. And then once the engine is running, it switches over to port and direct. And then it starts to use late ignition timing to help heat up that catalytic converter. Then once the catalytic converter is heated up, it wants to focus on heating up the engine. So it transitions to direct and then transitions to port. And they said going this route is the way that they you know, had the smoothest transition uh, for that engine idling. And so then you're focusing on warming up the engine once your cat is warm by using just port. And then once the engine is warmed up and you're just sitting there idling, it will switch to just direct injection uh, once everything's warm. That's your idle, your perfect idle control. So interesting, the startup strategy there, if you just start the car and let it sit there uh, and you know warm up, that's the strategy that goes into it. Overall, a very cool engine. I'm quite excited about the fact that weight was maintained uh, very closely, and yet they got a nice bump in torque. So I think this is gonna be a fun thing to drive. I'm looking forward to testing one out. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.